What's up everybody, it's Rens from the I Am Rancy Academy helping you create amazing photo manipulations in Affinity Photo. And in today's video, I wanna show you the best way to mask out fire and explosions to fire up and light up your photo manipulations all by yourself. All right, that being said, let me show you how to mask out fire and explosions in Affinity Photo. All right, so we've jumped into Affinity Photo and I've opened this amazing photo of fire. It's a really nice contrasty image. You can see that the background is really dark and the foreground is pretty bright or the foreground, the fire, I should say. I've simply found this image on unsplash.com right here. Go to unsplash.com and type fire. You will find this right over here and you can download it. All right, so now what I want to do is make a selection of this fire and in this case, the quick selection tool or the magic wand tool or any other tool simply won't work as well as the technique that I'm about to show you. And this technique is actually a technique that not many people know. So pay attention and you will definitely learn something from this video. All right. So what would I start with? I would simply select the background layer. Let's rename this fire for now because of course our subject is fire and you can see that on top on the bottom and on the left side and the right side we've got a lot of black space that we actually don't need at all so the first thing i would do is press c to go to the crop tool or to select the crop tool i should say and i would crop my image to right about here so that we've actually masked out or actually cropped out i should say all the pixels that we don't need so let's press enter and there we've got our nice crop of our fire all right the second thing that we want to do is go to our channels tab and my channel step is right here next to my layers uh, panel because i often use it however if you cannot find yours simply go up go to view go to studio and select channels right over here. So if it's unchecked, click it and your channels panel will appear anywhere in your screen. So mine is already right over here and you can see that we've got three channels. So actually four, we've got the red channel, the green channel, the blue channel and the alpha channel. Now I want to focus only on the color channel. So the red, green and blue. And you see that if I click the red layer that our image has turned to black and white. So the background is like black and the foreground or the fire is white. Now, if I would click on the green one, you would see that the fire is less bright. So there's less contrast with the fire and the background. And in this case, we want to actually mask out the background and select the foreground. And with masking, black is actually hiding and white is revealing. So I want to find the channels layer or yes, I want to find the channels layer that has most contrast. So in this case, if I would go to blue, it becomes even less contrasty. So in this case, and obviously because it's fire and fire is pretty red, orange and yellow, the red channel would work the best in this case. All right, so let's click on the red channel. And what I want to do now is make sure that my background is actually pure black because if we are masking and uh, our mask is not pure black, we will actually see some pixels shining through and this is something we don't want. So in this case, on the top right of my screen, you'll see my info panel and you can actually see that we've got an alpha level or value of 255, which means black. But if you look at the red, green and blue value, you will see that we've got a value of five or four in the background. So this means that there's actually still some red, green and blue in our background. So how to fix this? We would go back to our layers panel, press command L to open a levels adjustment layer. Another way to open a levels adjustment layer is by clicking on this icon and select the levels adjustment layer. This panel will pop up and all we would have to do is make sure to drag the black level or the top slider a little bit to the right. So this means that we are actually darkening our darkest pixels. So if I would close this window right now and hover my mouse over the background, you will see that almost the full background is has got a red, green and blue value of zero. So this is something that we are looking for. Now let's go back to our channels tab and right click the red channel and select add to pixel selection. So now Affinity Photo will actually make a selection of 
the bright pixels and will not select the darker pixels. So we've got the selection of our fire already. So we can now go back to the normal view by clicking this arrow icon right over here. Let's go back to our layers panel and let's hide the levels adjustment layer for now. So next thing that we want to do is mask out the background. Simply select the fire layer and press the little mask icon. And now I will press command D to get rid of the marching ants. Oh, by the way, if you watch to the very end of this video, I've got an amazing tip for you in which I will share how you can save your selections and cutouts so you can use them in any later project without repeating the same selecting steps over and over again. All right, let's go back to the video. And as you can see, we've got this amazing selection of this fire already. Now, let me show you what this actually looks like on a full image or on another image. First thing um, that I forgot, actually, if I would make my fire smaller right now, you can see that I've got all of these black pixels surrounding still in my image. And this is something that I don't want. So let me press command C and let's first right click our layer and select rasterize and trim so that once I resize our image right now, you can see that we've got rid of all these black pixels. So I've opened another amazing image already, which is this one right over here of this mushroom. So let's go back and copy our fire layer by pressing command C. Make sure the fire layer is selected. Go back to our mushroom layer. Let's recall this one mushroom and press command V to paste our fire in. Now let's resize it a little bit and put it on top of our mushroom because why not in endless world of photo manipulation, everything is possible. So why not set a mushroom on fire? And as you can see, this cutout of this fire looks amazing. Like you don't see the background at all anymore. I can position it wherever I like and it would still look amazing. Of course, if you set things on fire, there's more than just copy and pasting or masking out fire and putting it on your new image because fire actually is a light source. So it sends out light and this light will be reflected by the surroundings. So if we would want to improve this image, we would have to add some orange and some yellow bright tones to the image, to the surfaces actually that um, would reflect the light of the fire. Now, this was the first example. Let's redo that quickly with, with this example. So let's first name this layer fire again. And we're going to do the same steps, except now we already know that we need a black background so we can do one step before already. And that's by hovering our mouse over the black background and see if it's actually pure black. And this background is actually almost pure black, but let's just just in case add a levels adjustment layer and let's add a little bit of extra black or extra darkness into the darkest pixels. So now everything is actually like the red green and blue values are actually zero. Now let's go back to, uh, so let's select the right layer and go to the channels panel. Let's select the right composite layer right now because we already know that this is the one with the most contrast. So let's right click this layer, add to pixel selection, um, reset your view by clicking this little arrow icon, go back to your layers panel. You can now hide the levels adjustment layer that we've used and simply click the mask icon. Make sure the, level, uh, the right layer is selected and select the mask icon to mask everything out. Now, all we have to do is press Command D to get rid of the marching ants. And we have to click right click and rasterize and trim again. So now we've got rid of all the pixels that we don't need. We see we actually have everything on our canvas right now. So if I would resize this, you can see that there's no black pixels, or anything left. All right, so now same thing. Let me show you how this looks on our mushroom. Let's copy this layer. Let's go to our mushroom layer. Let's get rid of this fire and let's press Command V to paste it in. And let's scale it down a little bit. I hold Command so it's actually scaling from the middle. And let's add this to our mushroom. So let's add it like something like right here. And you can see that we've got this nice bright fire on our mushroom. Now this fire is a little more saturated than the other one. The other one had a little nicer color. So let's go to our um, 
Let's create an HSL adjustment layer. Let's clip it to the fire. And now we can actually reduce the contrast a little bit. Uh, sorry, we reduce the saturation a little bit. We can increase the brightness so that it actually matches more with the background and maybe adjust the colors like a touch to get this nice yellowy fire. So now it actually looks more the same like this fire. All right, so that's the best way to mask out fire and explosions so that you can use them in your affinity photo projects or photo manipulation projects. However, as promised, I've got this amazing tip for you and that is to save your selection. So now you see that if we go back to the first fire, we've actually made our selection of this fire and we would maybe want to use this more often in our photo manipulation projects. So how would we save this selection? And this is an amazing tip. Definitely, definitely do this. Go up to view, go to studio and open your assets panel. Whoops, open your assets panel. My assets panel is right over here because I use it more often. You can rename your layer. So once you've made a pixel layer or, if, or you've rasterized it and there's no other pixels surrounding it and there's no mask anymore, you can rename your layer. So I've already renamed mine fire open your assets panel and simply click and drag it onto your assets panel. Now I've already made a subcategory called fire and you can actually do this by clicking this little icon right over here and click create subcategory. And then once you've got your cup subcategory, it will be called assets. And then you can click this little icon to rename it back to fire or explosions or whatever you want to call it. So let me show you how, what, what we've actually done. Uh, let's hide this one for now. And once I just simply click and drag my fire asset onto our screen, you can actually see that we can use it instantly. Affinity Photo remembered the high resolution that we cut it out in. So for our future projects, we only have to click and drag our fire and don't bother ourselves with masking anymore. All right. That was it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And as mentioned before in the intro of this video, go to the link down below in the description and enroll for this free masterclass. I promise you it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna blow your mind and it will totally change the way you look at inspiration and saving your inspiration and getting your imagination up and running. All right, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.